That's recording. So anything you say now is canon. A, it's a canonical. Ma- a matter for a court of law. Absolutely. I can take you down finally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I can't remember the last time I did this podcast. Did you try and ease me into this, Mark Marin style? Like I don't even know that I'm recording. I always know when I'm recording less than you. <laughs> I always know. You'll never trick me into saying something vulnerable. Oh, no. That's right. This isn't a casual conversation. This is a podcast. Can't We're fool- making content. Can't fool you. Mm, Can't this, fool- is, this is a content conversation. is what this is. Can't fool you for a second. That's right. I was trying to lure you in to make it seem natural. No, it's not. It's no. unnatural. No. What we do is the most unnatural thing there is. <laughs> making content. It's against God and man. Recording conversations for others to listen to. Yuck. It is kind of perverse when you think about it. It really is, yeah. I'm I'm fine with it, though. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, no, it's fun. Yeah, we have fun, don't we? Yeah. Hi, Nick Mason. Welcome to Reanimates. Thank you. It's great to be back. Let's make it official. What did we talk about last time? Ultraman? It was Ultraman. Yes, Ultraman. Yeah. Yeah, People can go back in the feed. They'll have a fun surprise. You know what? They'll have a great time. I didn't. With this. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, what I wanted to say before we get into that, previous business from, from old episode, I did want to make a public apology. Not to you. To you, I apologise for nothing. But I wanted <laughs> to apologise to Tubi, the free streaming platform. You get, yep. to, you get to watch all sorts of free movies and TV shows for free, but you have to watch some ads. Uh, I wanted to apologise to them because I have, I have mocked them publicly and privately for years. <laughs> Uh, because I was like, well, what are you, a bunch of, bunch of garbage in this. But actually, having gone through the, uh, the library, there's a lot of good stuff on there now. Even if, even if you, you tried Don't need to it, tell me, mate. I know, but I'm telling the listener. If you, if you hadn't, if you, if you tried it years ago and you didn't like it, there is some crazy good stuff on here now. The Third Man is on here. You can, you can watch 1960s thriller Les Samurai. Bicycle Thieves is on here. Uh, Jackie Chan's Armor of God <laughs> is on here. Citizen Kane is on here. Yeah. A bunch of Buster Keaton stuff is on here. What, what I appreciate about this, the movie The Witch, or The Witch, if you will, is on here. They've the got Criterion shit on there. They've got Criterion stuff on here. Yeah, and all you have to do is watch a couple of ads or, as I do, uh, wait for the ad and go put some washing on or something, you know? You know what, though? Honestly, I wonder if it's always if certain movies are ad-supported and some aren't because I feel like a lot of the time when I watch something on Tubi, I don't get ads. Yeah, right. Which is good. Yeah. But also, I would watch it with ads because Tubi's sick. And the only <laughs> thing I will say about Tubi, if anyone from Tubi is listening, uh-huh. I don't appreciate this weird thing that they've been doing recently of taking a lot of nudity out of their films. Because Have they? Because what the fuck is the point of your streaming <laughs> service and yes. a lot of the movies on there uh-huh. if you're going to cut them up like that? Wow. Well, actually, today I watched uh, the, no- uh, the early 90s cyberpunk classic Nemesis, directed by Albert Pyun, mm-hmm. and there's a man's butt... <gasps> so if that's what you're looking for, and I know it is. <laughs> Always. Yeah, that's right. There's just a man looking out a window and you can see his full butt. Okay. Yeah. I- is it part of the story? No. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Doesn't matter. You could be clothed. It's irrelevant. I'm fine with it. But it's environmental storytelling. He lost his pants somewhere. Good the, for you. Well, I mean, the, the look, the Tubi conversation is very relevant because we watched this on Tubi. Well, I was going to say, yeah, I mean, I apologize to uh, Tubi for the things that I've said and now I'm, now I'm going to immediately revoke uh, my apology, because we had to watch this movie, The Age of Stone and Sky, colon, The Sorcerer Beast. It's This big. is a podcast, by the way. Explain the podcast, Lisa Div. Uh, I actually never do. Don't you? No. Okay. I I assume people know what they're getting when they open this up. <laughs> okay, right. It's a Jeffrey Combs podcast. I go through the movies of Jeffrey Okay, Combs. but perhaps this is a podcast where you, Lisa Dib, yes, you love the character actor Jeffrey Combs. I do. Yeah? I uh, do. Uh, but probably best known as... Herbert West. Herbert West from Reanimator. From Reanimator. Thank you. Or to some people, um, Milton Dammers in The Frighteners, which is probably a more like mainstream Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ma- mainstream He's film. also been a bunch of Star Trek characters. Yes, lots of Star Trek. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And he, how, many, how, many, how many roles do you think he's had, if you had to guess, in Hollywood? In Hollywood? <laughs> what do you mean? Like how many, how, many, how many characters has he played in Hollywood? How many movies and TV shows has he been in? Uh, well, I think, 100, 200? I think his IMDb... Because he's done a lot of voice work. Yeah, right. I right. don't know if you count. That. Oh yeah, he's probably be, he's been in he's, he's been some like comic book characters and animation. Transformers. Transformers. Yeah, huh? Yeah, Batman's. Yeah, stuff like your, that. Bat, your Batman's. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think his I think his IMDb is up to one seventy. Sounds something about like that. right. And you're committed to watching everything he's ever been in. Yes. Even this. Yep. It's too late now. We have. We both watched it. Yeah, yeah, and. Uh, this is actually the second time I've watched this. What? Why? Well, because I watched it when it first came out in 2021. <laughs> just as a fan. Just as a fan. Okay. I'm very dedicated yeah. to the work. Yeah. To the cause. So the, yep, that's right. Um, to your mission, your mission statement. I'm a completionist. Mm, and so yeah. now I'm doing it all. Ugh, look, I, I know that... <laughs> I know that I'm generally trying to be very positive and I uh-huh. don't want to decry people who are just trying to make art or work or whatever it is. But... Go on. 
This was very boring. It's awful. Listen, listen, <laughs> listen, Lisa Dib. And I have the, we have the same policy over at my podcast, The Weekly Planet, uh, that we will not make fun of somebody's fan film or student film mm. or like short film that they've clearly poured all their money into, you mm. know, and they've gotten their friends in on it and maybe they've got a cool idea and it just, you know, it doesn't work, but it's an, it's an interesting concept and they've tried and, you know, they, mm. maybe they want to get into the movie industry and they just want to come up with some fun ideas and, you know, learn how everything works. And, and that's, that's all good. fine. I wouldn't, I wouldn't make fun of it. There's a, I, I'm pretty confident I've seen on YouTube, somebody made a fan film once and it was, what if Darth Vader fought Batman? <laughs> right, and there wasn't. There was, if I remember correctly, there was next to nothing involved, like that, that explained why this was happening. Sure. Or you know, Darth Vader just walks down a corridor in the Death Star, and Batman is there, and they're like, "Let's fight." Yeah. You know, and so, but but clearly they went, "Okay, well we we've made these costumes, and we've got some good ideas for choreography and all that sort of stuff, and we're gonna we could get to make lightsaber effects and you know." build batarangs and all that sort of stuff. And yeah. I'm like, good, good for you, guys. Stuff. Get Getting out. They've probably got a lot of views. They pro- Somebody probably got a job in costume design or what have you. But I feel like all bets are off the table because they've made this and they've tried to sell it. And presumably they have sold it to Tubi. They have an LLC. I looked them up. Fallout <laughs> Productions LLC <laughs> is who they are. Oh, okay. So- They're not just some fans who love m- movie making and they've got a passion for it. They're like, we're going we're gonna to knock this out. There's a sequel on the way. I don't know if you saw that. Oh dear. Yeah. So this, I mean, this, that's, this is why this is the Age of Stone and Sky: Colon, The Sorcerer Beast, because there's another one on the way. The next in, one will be in the world of the Age of Stone and Sky. I'm on the back foot already because I'm generally not a fantasy person. Uh huh. I engage in a lot of fantasy, but I do not watch a lot of it. Oh yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's about my unhealthy coping mechanisms. That's the stuff. So I'm already like not going to be super invested mm-hmm. necessarily, but I thought maybe it'll turn me around. It did not. It is. That's the thing. I never have a problem with a film if it is a bit amateurish, uh-huh. if it's low budget. Obviously, yeah. I am one hundred percent not against something with a low bu- with a low budget because you can do a lot with a low budget That's if true. you have imagination. Yeah, an um, idea. That also, f- first of all, the thumbnail. It's very Harry Potter, isn't it? They've gone with a Harry Potter style thumbnail, mm-hmm. like Harry Potter style font. Yep. It really, I think it really sells a picture of what Pop- it wants to be. I wonder if it's because. The person who came up with this had like a really interesting idea in their head for a for a fantasy universe, and they just couldn't quite. I say couldn't quite. They couldn't at all <laughs> translate it to the screen. And maybe I I always wonder when I see something like this, if the idea is too big, like they're like, oh my god, it's this magical world and it's got a magical realm in it, and 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 there's wizards and warlocks and monsters and etc and then they're like well the budget's 300 bucks so but instead of going like okay well then instead of that instead of doing that let's do a story that's really small and let's set it let's have it a couple of people in, having a conversation and a little flashback or something like that you know some people having a conversation in a tavern mm. or something some, something really small just a little tiny pinch of that world but instead they've gone no you know what we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go big on this with our 300 hundred dollar budget it's very hard to do an epic world mm. on a small budget yeah because I feel like this had this had a bunch of different things you know like it had Corey Feldman it had Corey he's Feldman. in it you never see his face no but he's in it and it had you know it had you know like items of law you know it had like a bone knife and it had a it yes. had a weird creepy puppet they keep cutting to that we'll talk about. Mm-hmm. So it had a lot of elements of the idea of a greater world yes, it did, beyond yeah. it. Mm-hmm. But because of the nature – I mean, there's like one location in the yeah, whole – Yeah, it's a park. It's a public park. It's a public park, um, which is why they all feel very comfortable walking around barefoot, no doubt. It's a, a, But to be clear, it's not set in the present day. It's set in the Neolithic era. I looked it up. Oh, okay. Which is somewhere between 10,000 and 2,000 BC. It's amazing. Not to brag about it. Yeah. It's amazing that um, – how they act and talk and look. Yeah. Considering it's maybe set in 5,000 BC. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And they, yeah. you know, they still have like quite good, um, like makeup and hair in, in that Decent time. teeth and. Decent teeth. Yeah. That's something that always bothers me about period films, no matter what the period. Uh-huh. Anything before the invention of modern dentistry, sh- uh-huh. they, they should have fucked teeth. They absolutely should. At least black them out, you know? Django Unchained. Oh, yeah. Le- Leonardo DiCaprio's teeth in that. Uh-huh. Disgusting. Yeah, right. Even though he's a rich guy in that. Even though he's a rich guy, it doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. That's it's a true. time before. Yeah, yeah. Good teeth stuff. That is the that is the attention to detail. But again, if you're gonna do that in this, you know, and your budget three hundred bucks or whatever, every bit of black teeth stuff, teeth stuff, that's gonna set you back. You know, that might be three hundred bucks on its own. Yeah. Look, you, look, you got you got to put the money 
where your mouth is. Yeah. What's the plot <laughs> of this movie? All right. It's it's difficult. It's to hard say. to tell. Ta- it's hard to say, isn't it? It's hard to wrap it up. It does focus on yes, a couple the most of boring people. woman in the lo- in the world. They are very boring. Some well, would right. say charisma vacuums. <laughs> okay, so this one is directed by William L. Cox in a directorial. Debut of a feature. Congratulations. Yeah, so he, I think he did shorts and things like that. And by this. feature, we mean just barely because it's like... Hour 20. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think what's also interesting is that most of his stuff before this was in sound editing and design. Which is interesting. Because the, the sound, sound sucks. It's awful. <laughs> it's so bad. And everybody walks with the exact same clippy cloppy sound effect that's been added in post. Did you notice? It's always the same. Yeah, and the, which makes no sense. They're walking on grass and sticks yeah, and, and stuff. Yeah, and they don't have shoes on. And also, the music is pitched so low. Mm. Like, not that I would want the music to be loud like a Christopher Nolan film uh-huh. or anything, but it is so low and it's, it's really bassy, as in like yeah. slappy bass. <laughs> yeah, so it is. Everything yeah. sounds like it's yeah. sort of a 70s porno. Yeah, I'm not, gonna, I'm, not, I'm not even gonna look up when was the slap bass invented, because I know it wasn't 5000 BC. Well, maybe this, maybe it's a case of this guy was not good at that sort of stuff, and he's like, well, maybe I'll be a director. Maybe I'll have a go at directing. Yeah, maybe I'll have a go. And it was written by Jason Ginsberg in what looks like his feature writing credit, and he did like a little bit of TV before this. Uh-huh. Fairly, you know, people relatively starting out, but they have done some stuff before this. Sure. Mm-hmm. Enough that I think it could have been a bit more interesting. Or interesting at all. We open with Jeff, actually. He's doing some narration, the, quote, story of our people. Mm-hmm. So this is a tribal thing, guys. So... I imagine Mm -hmm. there's probably a lot of things that have been taken from various different cultures Uh around the world. Mm -hmm. I am not the person to look at to see whether (laughs) this is offensive or not. Uh There's no no feathered headdresses. Watch it and see, although I wouldn't recommend it. No, don't do it. Don't. Um, Well, so so this this is sort of the vibe we're going for. Listen, and I will tell you a story of our people. There was once a woman who was nothing. A woman who would not hunt and could not trap. She gathered no food. She did not care for the camp, for the children, or the sick. But her mind was sharp and her words were strong. And so I thought to give her our history so that she might carry it when I was gone. It's the, you know, and there's like an animation over it as well. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, which, and the animation looks fine. It's whatever. It's the, the story of a, a selfish, argumentative woman who got separated from her tribe and lost in the forest and left to her own devices. And she sucks, this woman. And she sucks. She's so bad at living. In the Neolithic period, she would absolutely be eaten by. There's no animals in this movie. There's very little of anything. I just realized. Yeah. In a time when there would have been animals wandering around everywhere. Uh-huh, yeah. I don't think you see a single real life animal. No. Not even like a dog they dressed up to look like no. a Neolithic dog. Because well, then you've got to get a dog guy. You've got to get, bring in the RSPCA guy to look around and be like, okay, I mean, this is embarrassing for the dog, but it's not dangerous, so we'll let you do it. They could have got one well trained bird. <laughs> That's true, yeah. Or just like go out to the forest. We live in the Neolithic period. <laughs> you know? Polly doesn't want a cracker. Polly doesn't know what crackers are yet. That's right. Especially because Jeff's character's name is. Far-seeing crow. Why doesn't he have a crow? Because he is is the crow. He saw a crow once. He likes crows. Yeah. He wears a little um, skull, like a little bird skull around his neck. I have to assume that's a crow skull, which seems morbid. Mm. Uh, So we cut to like a real life and the woman is Kine, played by uh, Ali Rivera Quinones, who meets a sorcerer beast. That's right. Voiced by... Corey Feldman. Corey Feldman, the very same. Uh, This is what he sounds like. I don't know if this is something that... Because Corey Feldman does a lot of voice work, doesn't he, now? Yes. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I don't know if this is what he normally does for voice work, but I think his voice is kind of fun in this. Sure. I will not turn against my own people. They are no longer your people. They abandoned you, and you became stronger. If you return to them, they will weigh you down. Kill them, and our power will grow. You know, it's kind of scary and stuff. Although I couldn't find any credit for who's playing the the beast. It is a different guy. Yeah, because that's not Corey Feldman. Corey Feldman's just doing the voice. But yeah. there's no credit for who's in the costume. I, th- I think I found it, but I don't remember what it is. Guess what? Whoever it was, you get away scot-free. Congratulations. Well, well yeah, because your face was covered. Mm-hmm. So you are... 
You are in disguise. So basically, Kine in a number of scenes that takes far too long. This isn't um, even the, the main plot. This is a flashback no. to a previous... Yeah, this is sort of laying the groundwork for why our eventual main character is supposed to give a shit about anything. Yeah. So the Beast gives her food, she becomes a sort of follower, gains some powers, but because she's a bitch, she refuses to do what the Beast wants, which is to kill her tribe. Mm -hmm. So she's like, hey, you saved my life, but I'm not going to do that. All right, so... She saves them somehow, and then we to return to the present day where Jeff... Of the past. Present day of the far, very far past. Mm -hmm. As Farsi and Crow is discussing the ways of the tribe. Mm, that's know. right. He's trying to get her to become a hunter. He's talking to uh, a girl called Whisper, mm -hmm. played by Yumi Park, and Boar, which is what this movie was. Am oh, I right? Oh, oh, oh. That's an easy layup. We got him. Yeah, we yeah. absolutely got him. Yeah, look, it was... I feel like the goalie moved away from the, yeah, huh, from the yeah. post for that one. Mm -hmm. Played by John Henry Whitaker. We also meet Fox and Oak, <laughs> Sarah Shoemaker and Michael Farker, but they disappear pretty quickly. Um, I think they're fucking nice. as in the film. Nice. Um, and then we meet some more characters who are looking for a bone knife, mm -hmm. the bone knife we mentioned before. Uh, Which is real. I thought it was just a myth. From that flashback earlier, but it's real. From that flashback, but it's lucky because Whisper finds it in like two minutes just lying on the ground. Hey, wow, it's on the ground. I found a bone knife. Oh, wow, that's weird. Mm. I better pick it up. I better pick it up. She's the main character. Whisper's the main character. I would describe her performance as... There, I did it. Yeah. I would Why say... is she in this? Who is this person? But I would say that about everyone in this film. I mean, mm. obviously this is an amateur production uh -huh. in the sense of, you know, everyone's like fairly... New to the game? Newish to the game. I mean, right. I looked up some people. Pretty much everybody in this film has a, a, a number of credits to their name. We're all fairly, acting? Yes. For acting? Yes. But huh. they're all fairly other, similarly low budget. Yeah, um, right. Some okay. like much smaller roles. Okay. See, but, a, lot of these, a lot of these actors give me the vibe of friends of the director, which again yeah. would be fine if this wasn't a commercially released movie, if they were just doing this for funsies. And also I kind of feel like even if you were friends with a director and you like surely at this point in the in the in the world of making your own stuff content creation if you will mm -hmm. surely everybody at this point even if you're not an actor you can give something of like you know how you would look on screen like everybody does instagram and they do youtube and they make little videos for their friends and they send them out and That's tiktok true. and what have you surely you would go Oh, I'm supposed to feel this, or I'm supposed to. Uh, I'm supposed to some... elicit an emotion. Yeah, but and it, yeah. It, it's wild that they found, especially this lead who doesn't seem to care where she is at all or what she's doing. Well, everybody's very flat. Yeah, um, it's kind of amazing. Yeah, it, that, yeah. Surely everybody knows what they look like on camera now, right? God. Or at, or at least as a director, you could be like. Give me a little bit more. Can you give I, me a little bit more? Yes. I would say that a lot of the problems with this film are the director's fault, um, not just in terms of directing the actors. Because that's the thing. D directing seems to be a huge responsibility because even if you have actors who maybe aren't up to scratch, mm -hmm. you have to get them up to scratch. Yeah, absolutely. You can't just be like, yeah, that was tolerable. That was fine, yeah. And also now we have unlimited – you have unlimited takes. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're not, we're not, we're not burning through film stock here. Yeah. We're just <laughs> – some of this is, but I'm, I've got plenty of space on my phone. You yeah. can film all sorts of stuff on it, you know? Yeah, it's like, hey, that seemed a bit flat. Take it again, maybe. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. And if you were an actor, I feel like you would, you know, maybe like rehearse and like. <laughs> maybe. Elicit. I will say the actress playing Kine, mm -hmm. the woman we made at the start, I would say outside of Jeffrey Combs, she's one of the better actors. I agree. When because she has a lot more to do as well, you know mm -hmm. she gets possessed, I think. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, and she gets powers and stuff, so she yeah, has yeah. a bit more of an emotional reactions to things that are evident on yeah. the screen. Jeffrey Combs has a lot of gravitas. I think maybe they were banking on that, like him carrying the 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 opening mm. third of the film, and by then you're sucked in, and you're like, okay, I will be willing to watch this. Yes, and because then... I have to do a podcast about it because that's everybody these days is doing a podcast. So like the film filmmakers these days are relying on. You know, a few years later, somebody having to do a podcast about it. <laughs> They're relying on someone choosing a character actor and deciding to do a completionist podcast of their work. You better believe it. I imagine for every character actor out there is at least one freak with a podcast that's, about that's them. That's right. Mm -hmm. Even if they don't release any episodes. They're making them. They're making them. Everyone in this movie is dressed like Byron Bay djembe players. Absolutely they are, yeah. Sleeveless uh, T, sleeveless Henley, yep. you know, um, pucker shell necklace. Yeah, I'm trying to think of what the American equivalent of Byron Bay is. I guess it's somewhere like Southern California. Yeah, like 90s surfer dude. They yeah. all got that vibe, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. like a kind of... Well, because 
Byron is kind of like it's still a fairly cashed up place. Yeah. Uh-huh, like yeah. everyone tries to look poor but isn't. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Crow <laughs> is I guess sort of like a shaman he sort sure of is, thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm, yeah. He's got a lot of like bits and bobs he rolls in his hands. Yeah, he's got some what do they call that when you're um he's a soothsayer. He's got a he's got a little 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 sack of bones and shells and stuff and he throws them on the ground and looks they, at him. The looks at him and that spells out the future or something. Yeah. One of the characters from before that we meet was looking for the knife kills Crow, mm. which means we have to spend the rest of the film without Jeff. Yeah, oh also yeah, if you if you're here because you're a big fan of Jeffrey Combs, and why not? He's a deli- he's a delightful man. Yeah. But yeah, if you're here just for Jeffrey Combs and you're like, I'm gonna watch this for Jeffrey, he dies at the twenty minute mark. Yep. He gets zapped with some vague electricity, and then he falls over and he dies. Not even zapped. He is touched lightly on the shoulder by a woman, and electricity is implied yep. by post-effect. Mm. So, yes, we're going to have to spend the next hour of the movie with no Jeff. <laughs> Feels longer than an hour. I won't lie to you. Yeah, look, it did drag on. Uh, there was a couple of times that I picked up my phone, and I thought, no, no, I need to concentrate on this film <laughs> sure. because I need to write notes about it. And my notes got... More and more sparse as the film went on. <laughs> because, because you were so engrossed. Well, nothing interesting enough was happening to make note of. Mm, absolutely. Uh, hey, they're in that park again. Yep. That, hey, lo- that looks like the same spot. Now, this is a bit, a bit, this is a bit more blue. It's interesting. Yeah, oh, yeah. there's a puppet now. Oh, this bit's red. Wow. <laughs> wow. Comedian Tim Clark, friend of the podcast Tim Clark, has a great bit about... Are I you mean, going to burn his material right now? I'm going to burn his material. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, uh, suck, I'm a, suck shit, Clarky. <laughs> Um, he has a good bit, basically, about how basically the more boring a film is, the more ridiculous the apps are that you look at on your phone. Oh, absolutely. That's right. And yeah, there was a part of me that was like, oh, I checked Instagram five minutes ago. Yeah. What do I have left? What else can I check? Yeah, that's right. What's going on on Facebook? No, no don't do that. Not Facebook. No. Facebook doesn't even show you what your friends are doing now. It's just random pages. Yeah. It's like you like fun you like fun animal friendships? I do actually. You like that guy and he cuts open horses' hooves and he squeezes goop out of them? <laughs> Is that a thing? Uh maybe it's maybe it's cow hooves. Oh. Yeah. Ho- hoof, ho- the hoof, hoof doctor. Hoof goop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't like that. Well, he's providing relief to cows or possibly horses, so I believe that when I see it. <laughs> the camera does some weird things in this movie. Um, you know, just like shakes for no reason. Yeah. Very unsteady in places. Just really odd. I could not I mean it doesn't do anything interesting. No, no. It just does things that uh, seem like they didn't maybe have a steady cam or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This movie isn't working with drones or, or a steady cam rig or maybe Especially, even maybe even a tripod. I mean, Who I'm knows? surprised they got the shots they did. It was very unlevel ground in that forest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there's this critter that keeps appearing uh-huh. to Whisper as yeah. she gains powers. Sort of a Muppet mark. situation. <laughs> I will say this puppet yes. was much better than what I expected from uh-huh. a movie with this budget. Okay. Because this is, it is a puppet. Yeah, it's pretty goopy. Um, it's a goopy looking puppet. You know what it looks like? Yes. I, I am going to post some pictures on the socials, but just for now, it looks to me like yes. De Piglio. I don't know what that is. It is a Chris Fleming sketch. Okay. About a weird bucket hat wearing puppet mm-hmm. called De Piglio. Okay. Uh, I'm intrigued. Google it. Do you have a fun fact? I see, I have a fun fact about this character whose name is Grecht. Um, you may have seen it as well. Picture of De Piglio. Oh, I get it. Yep. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like like a big ball of hair with teeth in it. Yep. Yeah. Great. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. So this thing is called Grecht, uh-huh. which is a sort of fucked up looking cocker spaniel catfish looking puppet. Also, I got I got turtley vibes as well. I did get turtley vibes later when you can see the scales on his head a bit uh-huh, better. Yeah. 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 He lives in another realm. Yeah. Which which our main character Whisper can. Can instinctively because she's got the bone knife. The bone knife takes you to Grecht realm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can take people with you. You can do you can do whatever you need. You can you can if if you're in danger, you can just instinctively send you and your friends to another part part of the forest. Yep. Which looks very similar to the part of the forest you were in before. But Pretty much exactly. Exactly the same. Mm-hmm. But you're out of danger, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. You know, because because you have one to three people pursuing you who are all minions of the Sorcerer Beast or something. Yeah, Sorcerer Beast. Some of whom have magic powers. Sorcerer Beast doesn't seem to have as strong a powers as he seems. Mm. He seems to not be able to find people who are not hiding very well. Yeah, it seems he's just wandering around, this guy. It's almost like he's a guy in a fucking pig mask. (laughs) Sure is. Uh, So here's the piece of trivia about Grecht. I I want to know everything about This is from IMDb Trivia, so it may not be true, but also why else would you put this on here? There's no other reason. (laughs) Trivia, and this is a bit of a spoiler, the villainous demon Grecht, because you think he's helpful. 
Spoilers, you think he's helpful at the start of the movie. He seems like he's going to be. But kindly he, old man turtle. But surprise, at the end of the movie, he's like, ha ha, actually, this was all me. He's a real kind I'm of evil. Mm-hmm. The villainous demon Grecht originally did not appear in this film. The first cut of the film fell short of feature length, so the producers wrote and shot an additional 17 minutes featuring Grecht. So he wasn't in it at all before. I mean, that So there makes, was even less going on in the original cut. That makes a lot of sense because the Grecht scenes are the only thing where anything is basically happening outside of the forest. Yeah. Otherwise, they are literally just wandering around the same patch of forest. Telling lore to each other. There's yeah. so much lore in this movie. Oh, my God. A... It's a real tell-don't-show situation, which I believe makes the perfect movie. If I know anything about filmmaking, just tell everybody what's going to happen, but don't show it at all. No, no, no. Um, just, you know, it's like a book. Let them imagine. Yeah, right. I mean, in many ways, a movie is like a book. <laughs> That's deep, man. Don't you agree? I agree. I agree. I feel like they wanted Grecht to be the comedic relief. Yeah, um, but also to fill in a bunch of gaps, I imagine. Well, also, that, that's sort of like that's kind of what I'm fascinated about in low budget movies. What I do like about movies, like low budget movies, if they come together at all, I love seeing them solve problems. I love it when you 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 uh, you watch a really low budget movie, like you know, a bunch of Disney Channel movies or like you know, cheap sci-fi stuff. Yeah. And there's there's a guy on a radio or something like, or a high school movie, there's a, there's a you know, the the PA announcements and mm. they just explain a bunch of stuff. Yeah, they need yeah. a lawyer. They, there's a, you know, there's clearly a voiceover, you know, the, this, and it's, it's clearly been added after the fact. The mm. main character's like, well, I'll tell you some stuff about my life. And, and it's clearly there because the movie didn't make any sense. Or mm. the, the audience was like, I don't understand what was happening there, so they just had to. You got to tighten this drop narrative. A, drop a drop a guy in there to just tell you what was going on. I love I love seeing the seams in all these bad movies, but I don't really like watching them. No, look, they're an interesting artifact a lot of the time. It is funny, like the scenes with Grecht are so long. Yes, <laughs> I mean, you it, can really feel the padding. It is him talking at length to you for so long about really nothing, and you um, never see Grecht and whisper in the same shot. No. It's always shot reverse shot because clearly it wouldn't hold up if you if you had the the human person and the puppet in the same frame, you'd clearly see the person operating the puppet. So they're like, we cannot film it like that. Well, yeah, I guess it's meant to be the idea that Whisper is transported to a realm and so you get her POV. Uh huh, yeah. Which, again, is fine if anything else. That's a else... TikTok for you. POV, you've gone to a mystical realm and Grecht is there. <laughs> get ready with me to visit Grecht in the realm. That's right. It is a lot of this puppet and a smoke machine uh-huh. and a couple of blue green lights. Yes. Maybe they filmed it under a traffic light. They, they filmed it at a blue light disco. Oh, nice. So this is the kind of thing that Grecht says sometimes. This is what I mean when, they, when I say they're trying to make him funny. Uh-huh. I'm guessing you're either here on accident, or you're really quite bad at magic. What is this? Who are you? You don't know? Huh. Well, that's disappointing. I don't suppose you feel like guessing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very good. Oh, Greg, oh, my good man. That Greg, what oh, a my, card. He's a card, isn't he? Yeah. Oh, He'll say anything. He's the Kramer of this universe. He is kind of the Kramer. Yep. He's he po- all oily. Pops in unwanted. Yep. Got wisdom. That's right. I guess. Got cancelled. He went onto the comedy seller stage and <laughs> said some slur. real bad stuff. <laughs> some real bad stuff. Oh, no. Grecht on the You Can't Cancel Me apology tour. That's right. Whisper, Oak and Fox, they're who we're left with now. Cause Jeffrey Combs is dead. Jeffrey, other people died. Not a lot happens for a while. God, nothing happens. I just wander around. And then DePiglio returns in a puff of smoke and red lighting and he literally says, you want to learn about magic, but what about the magic of friendship? He does say that, doesn't he? Yeah. Fuck off, turtle puppet. Yeah. What are you talking about? You cannot put that line in a film uh-huh. in any kind of seriousness. Mm. Uh, and he gives a long and tedious speech about magic, as most yeah. of his speeches are. Mm. And again, it seems like we just cut back to Grecht after anything happens. So Absolutely, there's, yeah. There's the slightest bit of action. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, there's like a little bit of um, trying to magic something here. Mm-hmm. And then they're back to Grecht. I was almost sort of happy to see Grecht when he first popped up. Because <laughs> I was like... Yeah. Look at this fucked puppet. Yeah, huh? That's kind of fun. Mm. He's a little bit sassy, I guess, for, yeah. for what this script is. This is kind of silly. Maybe this movie is a little bit more fun and tongue-in-cheek than, than it is. It is not. No. It is trying to make me think that that puppet is a really good puppet. Mm. 
So, I mean, he tells a long story about how the Sorcerer Beast came to be. Apparently, the Sorcerer Beast was like a man who got greedy with magic. That's right. Yep. And then he became a Sorcerer, and then he became a Sorcerer Beast. That is the order that that happens right. in. And so, obviously, the overarching idea is, I would have thought, that you uh, that you have to kill the Sorcerer Beast. Mm-hmm. Doesn't appear to be what they want to do, though. No. There is a lot of nonsense about Whisper not trusting Kine, mm-hmm. because they eventually meet Kine and her tribe. There is... Three people in her yeah, tribe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> There's some hand waving earlier on. We're like, why doesn't why doesn't Whispers tribe? Where are they? And they're they're off. They're 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 somewhere else. They went somewhere. And and the the the, the Jeffrey Combs and these other couple of people. They're they're off on a hunting training mission or something. Something like that. Yeah. It is amazing how few people are in this film. <laughs> Isn't it though? Yeah. Yeah. Like Kynes tribe is I think her and three people, uh-huh. and then Whisper. Yeah. Like that's her and two. And again, I think you know this. To me, this speaks as of a of a movie where, like, what's the expression? Their their reach exceeded their grasp. You know what I mean? Like, if they had more money, they could just have hired a bunch of extras. You know, hired a hundred people. That was maybe the the initial plan. Mm. Like, we we can have the conversation up front, and then we can have just hundred people milling around. You know, or in or in a big budget movie, they just CGI a bunch of people in the back or whatever. Yeah. But of course, if you have no money, it's just three people. You know. Yeah, I mean, I look. I would have thought that on a movie of this budget you wouldn't even pay extras like yeah I, as any is anybody did anybody get paid for this yeah like I would, jeffrey combs would go pay for this i would love to know why jeffrey combs was in this like yeah. i understand actors gotta work mm-hmm. blah 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 and there is a few projects he has done in his career where i thought oh that's obviously a favor to the director yes maybe Be- he's friends with him or something yeah. yeah like he's friends or you know i know that he did he did one film that i think was like a favor to his daughter, I think. Right, okay. Uh-huh. Um, it seems like it, it was. So, you know, you can kind of see that. And you know what? That's fine. Yeah. If you know Jeffrey Combs in some capacity That's and he's right. willing to pop into your movie, yeah, huh, yeah. fucking go for yeah, it. Yeah. Um, you have exactly 20 minutes with Jeffrey. Yes. And then he <laughs> is off to another appointment. Mm. But yeah, uh, you know, I just, I cannot imagine, what, what can't, I don't know what he saw in this. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, maybe. Maybe he just had a free day and the email got him at exactly the right time. Yeah. And he thought, you know what? I started out in slow budget things and let's do somebody a favour. Yeah, look, it, it could be that he is generous with his uh, time and name. Yeah. In the sense of like, I know that lending my name to something will give it a little bit more attention. Uh-huh. That's the thing. The scenes he is in are... The best parts of this film, because absolutely, he's, and everything looks worse by comparison. And he's acting circles around these people because yeah. he is so much better. Uh-huh. Uh, which is, again, that's almost not to say that the actors in this are bad. They're not terribly good, but Jeff is a, a very good actor, and he has done it for forty-five years or something. Uh-huh, like that. Right. Prior to his retirement, Bruce Willis just did a bunch of what what we what we now call geezer teasers, or sometimes geezer pleasers. Okay, which is where you um. Where it's a it's a low budget movie and you get in a a, a Bruce Willis or a Liam Neeson or something like that mm. or a Mel Gibson and they're in it for like two minutes. Mm-hmm. They're maybe in a start. They they give the the main guy a mission and then you see him at the end or something like that. Yeah. But then you get to put him on the 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 thumbnail. You get to put him on the poster. You get to put him in, exactly. in the advertising, what have you. Yeah. And he would do that for a million dollars a day. Although the thing about Bruce Willis though is. I think towards the end he didn't know that he was doing a lot of those. Yeah, I I want I mean yeah yeah that that uh the very sad the Bruce Willis situation but I think Horrible. I think I think a lot of from what I understand I think a lot of that was him setting up his family not setting him up but like financially financially being yeah. like okay well if I do 20 movies a year of these yeah knock them out and then you know when I when I'm retired I don't have to worry as Exactly much. yeah. It's terribly sad. I love Bruce Willis. Mm. I just don't want to think about that too much. Okay. Well, um, let's t- talk about this movie. It the, also the makes most... me sad in a different yeah, way. Yeah, no, so in a different way, yeah. Kine is trying to teach Whisper to be more magic, but then she turns out to be kind of a jerk because she kills one of her own tribe and she goes on a diatribe about how you have to kill for survival and uh-huh. the pointlessness and cruelty of life. And <laughs> I guess we're that's the to... big moment. That's the big acting moment. I feel. Oh yeah, movie. I was I was emotionally stirred. Yeah, Kine convinces Whisper to rebuild the bone knife because mm-hmm. it's like broken. Uh huh. To kill the beast. Uh huh. They rebuild the knife and then Whisper kills Kine. Yes. Bum, I mean, bum. fine. Yep. But why? I don't know. 
Um, <laughs> anyway, back to Grecht. Yep. The name Grecht, G-R-E-K-T, yes. looks like a graffiti tag when you write it down. It does, doesn't it? That's yeah. what I'm thinking of looking at my notes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It looks like someone was trying to write get wrecked in a fun way. Oh, nice. Which is a fun, very Australian term. Mm. Do you think he has a brother called get a dog up here? <laughs> <laughs> so, look, the Sorcerer Beast, uh, his look, when I think about it, mm-hmm. it's not too bad. For this yeah, thing. I mean it's it's a man with a black sheet on it on, on top of him, and then they've put like a bull mask on it. Well, a lot of the times the problem is more in what he's doing, whatever the actor is doing, because a lot of the time he is deliberately covering his face uh-huh. in some way, in a way that makes it look like they didn't have like enough of a mask. Or yeah, something. right. Uh huh. Or it kept falling off. Yeah, had to, you need yeah. to hold it in. Can place. Can you hold it in place, please? Yeah. But yeah, Whisper doesn't kill him, even though he's meant to be the big bad. Uh-huh. She sends him into the dream world. Because <laughs> you can do that. That's the that's the, the handy part of, of a, a really vague sort of set of mystical powers. If you're having a problem, mm. you can just say, well, like the mystical, you can put people in the mystical realm, you can go through the mystical realm, whatever powers you need. You need to, are you, are you too far from your sword or whatever? Just, well, you've actually got the power to grab it using the power of the force or whatever. I'm also realizing now. Yes. Did she kill Kine or did she put her in the other universe? Oh. Because I'm, I can't believe I've forgotten a film I watched like less than 24 hours ago. Because uh-huh. isn't there a bit at the end where she gives her like an ultimatum, like at the very end where oh, she's like, yeah, you maybe. can either come with me as our captive <laughs> yes. or be in the dream world. So I think she stabs her to like take her down. Okay. No, no, no. I mean, okay. I think... Stabbing her doesn't kill her, it takes away her powers. Okay, sure, sure, sure. Okay, so she doesn't kill her, but she takes away her uh-huh. powers. And then she's like, you guys, you can come with us and live in our tribe as a captive, uh-huh. uh, which is a great offer. Mm. Uh, but as you said, it does end with Grecht turning out to be evil. Mm-hmm. And he's burning the forest down. And he's talking about how great the sorcerer beast is. Yep. And he says... Uh, it was him all along, Yeah, it's Grecht. Uh, this guy, this demon in a weird shadow realm. Yeah. It was him, actually. This turtle puppet who's yeah. probably two feet tall. You thought he was cool. You were going to ask him to be your best man at your wedding, but actually he's... You wanted he's to ba- kiss him on his turtle head. That's right. And then he says this, which, you know, is is what it is. Now, time to make a mess. <laughs> You know, yeah. kind, of, kind of fun. Just evil stuff, you know? Just, you know, fun. Like, he's the closest this movie has to, like, a camp supervillain. Sure, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I I, don't... I don't. You don't know why you watch this. Look, I've watched, I've watched some incredibly good films yeah. in my life mm. for this podcast. And I've watched some not great films. Mm-hmm. And the not great ones are usually because they're not interesting. Yes. It's not because they're amateurish necessarily, because mm-hmm. as we were talking about, that's not a problem if you've got like an interesting enough script to get by, yeah, or yeah. you know the acting is okay, or something. Yes, and I, you know, at least in a movie, like if a movie's really low budget and it's bad, like going back to the Darth Vader Batman thing, mm. which I'm fairly confident is real and something I haven't made up. At least, even if big elements of it don't make any sense. You like you might be like, oh my god, when Darth Vader swung the lights up, then Batman did a backflip over him. How did they do? You know, mm. they have that that's an ma- amazing piece of camera work or something. Or like in a full length feature, maybe it's bad, but you go, oh, but that scene, mm. that one scene, and that happened, and that's memorable. I can't remember anything that happens in this. No, it's I mean, n- none of it is memorable at all. There's not. It's not. There's not one. There's not a mystical battle or like. They they built the entire movie around. Well, there's going to be a special effect, and she's going to grab the bone knife, and it's mm. she's going to become you know she's going to uh, emerge in her full power or what have you, and we're going to see a cool special effect or something like that. Nothing happens in this. It's yes. just walking around and talking about law. I would say that the most amount of special effects really is some people's eyes light up blue when they get powers. They sure do. And then when someone is lightly touched on the shoulder. That is meant to imply that they are being electrocuted and a sort of green light comes out of them. Uh-huh. Yeah, even the fight scenes, they are. there's no sound effects, so it's just kind of you can just hear the sort of light slapping yeah, sure. uh, of each other. Mm-hmm. And again, they're shot like super messy. Uh-huh, yeah. um, it's just, it's, it's deeply fucking boring. It's so, 
it's so tedious, even amongst like fantasy stuff, which I don't normally go in for, mm-hmm. but it doesn't need to be. You're furious. I'm not. You're look, despairing. I'm not mad. I'm disappointed. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I wish that I could um, be nicer about this film because I don't like, I don't like uh, saying things like that. I like to be nice about things, but I genuinely can't really think of a compliment for no, this. No, there is, there is nothing. Beyond uh, Jeffrey Combs was good in this. Uh, you know, he was as good as could be mm. because, as we've said, even the script is not particularly good, and so it, so he's doing the best with what he can. Mm. I, I, you know, I wish that films like this had something to grasp onto, whether it's, yeah, you know, like kind of like a fun, <laughs> any kind of fun would yeah. be nice. The example I always give in terms of like low budget done well is uh-huh. usually horror movies. Yeah, absolutely. Because I feel like people who really want to make horror films mm-hmm. are more likely to have. More ideas and they're going to have more fun with it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Look at things like fucking Evil Dead. They yeah. made that for comparatively fuck all. Absolutely. And they made one of the best horror comedies of all time because they had nothing but really interesting ideas mm-hmm. and they just did whatever they could to yeah. make them happen in a cheap way. Yeah, this doesn't even have like, okay, well, we've got a really good idea for a finale and we'll just try and be entertaining enough till we get to the big wizard battle or whatever. Yeah. And then people will remember that. Yeah, like, uh, I don't know if you saw the movie Hereditary. Yes. No, wait, not Hereditary. Malignant. Did yes. you see Malignant? Loved Malignant. Malignant is a, is a relatively low budget or seemingly low budget movie, mm. and you spend three quarters of the movie. It was recommended to me, and I spent about three quarters of the movie going, why did people recommend this to me? <laughs> it seems bad, but deliberately bad. And at the end you go, oh, okay, I get it now. I love this. I love what's happening right now. Yeah, it really ramps up. And I think to a degree that is kind of a... That is a fake low budget movie. Like that costs more than you would think. But I mean, the the spirit of a horror movie is there, where they just go, okay, well, we've got one great idea. It's a great idea for a monster. We can do some creative things with it. Mm. We can give them some creative kills or interesting set pieces or what have you. And even if the movie itself, even if the some of the acting is bad or it looks kind of cheap, people will forgive us because it's fun. And 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 there's something yeah. you know they always said that like a basic rule of script writing is something like where well, you give, give people an action sequence every ten minutes. It's not give everybody grect every 10 minutes, is it? <laughs> is it? Filmmakers of this movie, whose names I've forgotten. I would say that the decline of practical effects and the mm. preference to CG yeah. is making low-budget films look so much cheaper. Absolutely. I think that even in a low-budget film where you are doing practical effects instead of relying on CG, mm. because that's the thing with practical effects, cheap practical effects can still look kind of fun. Yeah. Sometimes it doesn't even matter if they're bad because you know that that's not a real heart or whatever. Yeah, sure, sure. But bad CG, cheap CG looks so bad. Yeah. If you can't do CG to the level at which yeah. it looks possibly acceptable, uh-huh. don't do it. Just don't do it. Yeah. Just I do practical. Also, like, so like a lot, of, a lot of movies to these days look bad, like big budget movies look bad because nobody – like for for a Disney or what have you, because nobody wants to make a decision on the day about how how any shot looks or anything like that. Yeah, they just go, okay, just film. We'll set up five cameras and we'll film this scene with all the people, and then we'll figure it out later. We'll fix it in post. Yeah, we'll add the visual effects. We'll figure out who people are looking at later and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. and I'm wondering if that has infected low budget filming as well. Like people get the impression of like, yeah, you just film a bunch of stuff. Because it's cheap now to just film, film a bunch of co- uh, coverage and, it, you know, there's no film stock and there's no, you know, it's all just on digital. Yeah. We'll just film a bunch of stuff of people talking and then we'll make it look interesting later, even though they have no budget to do that. Yeah. So maybe that's it. I don't know. Look, that's that's very fair because, you know, things like editing programs and stuff are very accessible to people. Uh-huh. Like it's not like you need to be Thelma Shoemaker or anything. You can that's just right. You can just be a person with a decent computer. Yeah. But, but yeah, you're right. Like even just things like... You know, things that could be practical on the day mm-hmm. make a huge amount of difference. Absolutely. I mean, this this doesn't really support my argument because okay. it's actually the opposite, but uh, because it ended up turning out very well. But Bob Hoskins on the set of Who Framed Roger Rabbit uh-huh. saying that he went insane because he was acting to a green screen yeah. mm. for 16 hours a day yeah, huh. uh, and he had to hallucinate every mm. every person he was talking Absolutely, to, which turned yeah. out to uh-huh. be uh, animated uh-huh. and it drove him crazy. Yeah. But that actually didn't turn out very well. So maybe there's a case for it. Usually, I think in genre films, practical effects is almost always the way to go. Hundred yeah. percent. I mean, at least at least the sorcerer beast is real. At least he's a real guy. He's a real guy. Um, and 
in fairness, I don't know how much because there's not a lot of stuff that happens in this film. I can't look at something and go that would have been better with practical effects. Because not, yeah. <laughs> because nothing is happening for me to well, point out. Well, shot any kind of shot decision on the day would have been better because it's just people standing next to each other. Yeah. You know, there's there's no close ups. There's no. Yeah. Any there's no zooms. There's no anything. There's no personality in the filming at all. It's very strange. Yeah. It sort of it sort of does look like. Actually, I wouldn't even say that it looks like someone shot it on a phone because I think even like. You know, Gen Z are very good with their fun little zooms and they stuff. They are, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. I will say there are some people on TikTok who are making better short films on their TikToks yeah. than mm. some people are making on f- features on Tubi. Yes. <laughs> it's it's incredibly interesting to see what people with a few ideas and a phone can do. Tubi even has Tubi exclusives. Did you know that? They're making stuff specifically for Tubi. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've, I've watched a number of Tubi originals myself. It's, oh, yes. This is not a slide against Tubi. Okay. All right, we love Tubi. What about this What about this one, uh, Lisa Dib? What about the uh, Tubi original Deadly Delph? That sounds amazing. <laughs> right? I think the last... Deadly la- Delph. Deadly Delph. So I think the last thing I looked at on Tubi was a film called Horny Teenagers Must Die. Interesting. Which is a... A horror comedy where a group of teens get killed at a like a cabin in the woods, uh-huh. and it's a psychopath who's killing them off with farm tools and sex toys. Interesting. Okay. Interesting that they didn't pick one or the other. Um, <laughs> yeah. There is also a film that is from two thousand and three. It is a feature, so this is an hour and a half, mm-hmm. one hour and thirty five minutes, called Rectuma. I don't get the reference, but all right. I don't think there is one. Okay. Um, an American man infected by a Mexican butt humping frog returns to Los Angeles where his rear end grows to 20 feet and frames him for murders. Wow. Uh, uh, hello, uh, Academy. I've got a <laughs> Best Picture nominee for you. Hel- Stop calling. I apologize. Um, it's called Crash. It's uh, about racism. It's called, uh, it's called Rectuma. You're going to love it. I will not. I refuse. I mean, this episode is more of an ad for Tubi than it is for the film that yeah. we covered. Yeah, and I think you should be sponsored by Tubi. I probably mention Tubi in every episode Yeah, because I love Tubi. <laughs> yeah. Who wouldn't? Although I will say, I don't think the reanimator movies are on Tubi anymore. Well, I mean, that is that. That is the um, downfall of any streaming services. The rights disappear and then all of a sudden... Oh, they do have, they have Bruce Lee's Fist of Fury. This thing's got everything. I will say, uh, if you're in Australia, the, Reanim- the, the reanimator movies are on the Broly app, which is another app I really like. I don't know if over- you overseas listeners can get it, but it's the streaming service for Umbrella Entertainment here, mm. which is a sort of entertainment company. Yes. It's a great... App, especially if you're into Australian films, because Umbrella is an Australian company, so right. there's a huge amount of Australian films that even I'd never heard of. So does I it was... have Malcolm? I don't know. Does it have the Nugget? Probably not. Does it have Takeaway? No. Wow. So it doesn't have good Australian films. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, that's um, right. No, Tubi's great. Um, Tubi added a lot of horror stuff recently, so definitely go and check it out. I am noticing that we are deliberately talking more about Tubi to not have to talk about this film. Okay, well, if we can just maybe, maybe wrap, because, I mean, that's the plot, isn't it? But that here's is... Some, here's, here's a review on Letterboxd, which I thought was interesting. Yep. From Octopus Grift. Three and a half stars. It's crazy people aren't watching this. This has a lot going for it. Jeffrey Combs and Corey Feldman, silly melodrama and a big old puppet. It really is weird that his, this has been out for like eight months, so there's an older review, mm. and nowhere on the internet seems to be indicating that people are watching it. I may be the first person to write a review for it. If you like a swords and sorcery movie, you can do worse than this. It definitely was made on a budget, but it seems like something people had fun uh, doing. Now, if you're listening, Octopus Grift, if you like swords and sorcery movie, you can do better, worse than this. That's not true. You cannot do any worse than this. There's no swords. Or, and There's barely, barely sorcery. Barely any sorcery. And also, I take umbrage the idea that this is silly, because silly implies that there was like humour or yeah. like mm-hmm. jovialness involved. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, just because something is bad doesn't mean it was deliberately silly. Mm. An elevated schlock gave it half a star and said, I certainly didn't expect this to be good. Uh, but it's genuinely one of the worst films I've ever seen. <laughs> most of the runtime is just people talking about the law, which mostly seems to be a caricature of Native American beliefs. Then there's occasionally some action that has the look of a Power Rangers fight without any choreography figured out, so things just kind of happen, and then they stand around talking a lot more. So something that I also notice, I love Letterboxd as well, uh-huh. and something I notice a lot is when I look up any Jeffrey Combs film, especially the lesser-known ones, oh, yes. the more obscure ones, there is always at least a handful of people in the 
reviews uh-huh. who are like me, yep, my my people, and they have said outright, I watched this for Jeff. Well, Ka- Caitlin has given it one star and she says, I'm doing this for the Jeffrey Combs people. Yep. Um, yep. Thank you, Caitlin. You're doing the Lord's work. Even your worst low-budget movie and a bunch of stuff on Tubi will have video breakdowns on YouTube or people will post a clip on Twitter and be like, can you see this kill? This is crazy or whatever. Yeah. Nothing. I won't lie to you, Lisa Dib. I'll be honest with you. At a certain point, I went to YouTube hoping for like a really quick recap so I didn't have to watch the rest <laughs> of the movie. I think in like 20, 30 minutes, I'm like, oh, I hope there's somebody's recap. Nobody had. I wouldn't have judged you for yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to think of, because I haven't, I hadn't watched a trailer for this. I'm trying to think of what you would even put in a trailer. Like, because, you know, with a trailer, you normally take, like, a lot of fun parts, a lot of interesting uh, yeah. parts, try and get people in. Glowing, um, you'd put the glowing eyes, you'd put the vague electricity. Grecht. You'd put Grecht in it. Yeah, you you would market Grecht as, like, Baby Groot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you yeah. know, obviously I'm waiting for the Grecht dolls. <laughs> yeah, for sure. The bobble heads. Dancing Grecht. Yep, yep. Mm-hmm. He's he's going to be, like, a reaction gif yeah, this time next year. That's right. And then we'll be able to say we were there at the start. Yeah, that's right. We time were... to make a mess, he could say. Yeah, yeah, it's you know? a little little string at the yeah, back. Yeah, that's it. right. Yeah. Little animated gif, you know. Yeah. My face when I go to the bloody, bloody Taco Bell. <laughs> <laughs> Time to make a mess. <laughs> uh, oh, oh. Classic Grecht. Yeah, he'll do that, won't he? Yeah. Oh, you are so Grecht, mate. I'm so Grecht. In a way, we're all Grecht. That's so true. And I think that's the takeaway from this. Because, you know, sometimes you're trying, to, you're trying to be fun and entertaining and there's just some... Some, they're there and they're all just, blah, you know, blah, where's my charisma, you know? <laughs> and you're, you're working hard. You're trying your best. Thank you for going on this journey with me, Mesa. You're very welcome. I really appreciate uh, that you watched this. I even watched the bits after he died. Why did I do that? Because it's a Jeffrey Combs appreciation podcast. I could have just been like, yeah, he was good. Yeah, that, that's the thing. There is, there, there is a few movies that I'm not sure whether I'm going to cover. Mm-hmm. Because he has even less screen time. I guess he could have shown up at the end. Well, yeah, we don't know. Yeah, we didn't know. Uh, yeah. As a ghost, you know, yeah, more, as a more ghost. style. Yeah, 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 yeah. But there are some films where I'm like, is it even worth covering this? Something like Man With Two Brains where he's in it for one scene, maybe three minutes. Maybe. Okay, sure. And I'm like, am I going to cover a whole film? Yeah, okay, right. Or am I just going to just do this scene? Maybe you could do Maybe you could do an episode that's just like four scenes with Jeffrey Combs or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, like a wrap-up of, of his yeah. of his teeny tiny roles. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, mm-hmm. the less than five minutes. We'll call it Teeny Tiny Jeff. Teeny Tiny Jeff. Yeah. And I'll make a little Teeny Tiny Jeff. That's right. Mm-hmm. And I'll take him on little adventures in my pocket. Exactly. Yep. Um, well, thank you, Meso. You're very welcome. I really appreciate you. Had a blast. On the podcast, not yeah, watching yeah. the movie. That was bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was great. But you know what? I think this is more a testament to... The magic of friendship. I think so too. Mm-hmm. Maybe Grecht was He right. was right. Oh, no. Damn. Okay. This movie was deeper than we thought. Got me, Grecht. Yeah. Anything to plug, Nick Mason? I have a podcast called The Weekly Planet. We talk about movies and comic books and TV shows and, and et cetera. Oh, Usually yeah. with bigger budgets, you know. Generally. Plots and so yeah. forth. Spe- special effects. Yeah. You know. Blockbusters acting. Block bust acting yeah. Famous people. Mm-hmm. You know. Not always. No. Not no. always. Sets. I've heard they're important. Yeah. But what do I know about cinema? <laughs> That's right. I'm no, I'm no Martin Scorsese. That's right. I ain't crazy. I'm Martin Scorsese. <laughs> I realised that wasn't a good enough rhyme. I'm so sorry. Goodbye, get out, Lisa. Get out of my house. <laughs> I will. Finally. <laughs>